All right, the Olympics are winding down and NASCAR is back on track. We're going to preview Watkins Glen and I'm also going to preview who's going to win the regular season title between Denny Hamlin and Kyle Larson. Coming up next. Okay, it's a road course. It's Watkins Glen, so we're just going to get it out of the way right now, right here, real quick. Chase Elliott's going to be your favorite. He's won the last two. He's led 73% of the laps in the last few races, and his average finish in the last two races is one. So Chase Elliott is your clear favorite. No surprise there. Some other guys that you should pick, the guys who I think have a chance to win the race, would be Denny Hamlin, Kyle Larson, Kyle Busch, and Martin Truex Jr. Martin Truex Jr. has led 2.78% of the laps and he has an average finish of second, so he is a clear contender. Denny Hamlin has led 1% of the laps with an average finish of eighth. And Kyle Larson has led 3.3% of the laps with one fewer races, I think, in this deal. And he is, what's his average finish? His average finish is seventh. And Kyle Busch has led 17.2% of the laps, and his average finish is 7th. Uh, some guys who might have good runs and surprise you here would be Eric Jones uh, with an average finish of 4.5, Daniel Suarez with an average finish of 10th, and Ryan Blaney and Kurt Busch with an average finish of 8.5 and 9.5 respectively. So that's pretty much it for Watkins Glen. Those are your favorites. It's pretty cut and dry. It's a road course. Chase Elliott and... Those other guys could probably upset him that I mentioned. All right. Okay, and with four races to go in the regular season, there are two guys who can possibly win the championship, the regular season championship, and that is Kyle Larson and Denny Hamlin. Denny Hamlin has been basically points racing or stage racing, and Kyle Larson has been going for wins. So two very different strategies, and let's see what the numbers say for the rest of the season as to who is going to get this regular season title. To my left, we have basically the people's champ so far this year, Kyle Larson with four wins. So let's look at his statistics at the remaining tracks. At Watkins Glen in the last two starts, he has an average finish of seventh. He has no top fives. He has two top tens, and he has led six laps at this track. Uh, the Brickyard, uh, uh, Roval, they have obviously not run, so with no starts there, but an average finish of 15.2 on road courses, not too shabby, but not too great either. Uh, Michigan, he in the last four starts, he has an average finish of 15th. And a one top five, one top ten, and no laps led. Oh, no, he's got one lap led. I'm sorry. He's got one lap led. Uh, and let's move on to Daytona. Uh, super speedways have been Kyle Larson's weakness other than road courses, but it looks like he's improved on road courses this year. But at Daytona, he has an average finish of 15.8. He has zero top fives. He does have three top tens, and he has led one lap at Daytona. So these numbers, not looking so good, but you do have to keep in mind, Kyle Larson has won twice at Michigan in Chip Ganassi equipment. Obviously, Hendrick equipment is a little bit better. So I'm just going off 2018 and beyond numbers. And you also have to remember that Kyle Larson missed basically a full season. So he doesn't have as many starts at these tracks as Denny Hamlin. So that's something to keep in mind. But okay, let's look at Denny Hamlin's statistics. And so to my right, we have Denny Hamlin, the man who is looking at the at the system itself and trying to, you know, hack the system or whatever you want to call it by points racing or, you know, stage racing or whatever you want to call it. But let's look at his remaining four races along with his uh, 13 point or so lead. He has an average finish at Watkins Glen of eighth. He has one top five, one top 10, and he has led two laps at this particular track. So those numbers look pretty good. The Brickyard, obviously, nobody has run there. He has an average finish of 15.4 on regular road courses overall. So him and Kyle Larson, pretty much dead even right there. Uh, advantage to Larson at Watkins Glen thus far. Okay, on to Michigan. He has an average finish of 6.83 with two top fives, four top tens, and 40 laps led, but zero wins. 
Uh, and like I said, if you go from 2018, Larson has no wins, but if th these are the last six races for Denny Hamlin. If you take Kyle Larson's last six races, Kyle Larson has two wins here. So depending on how you want to split this, this could go either way, but I'm going to give the advantage to Kyle Larson because he has two wins here, but like I said, this could go either way. Uh, to make it interesting, let's give it to Hamlin, so, so, so it's 2-1 uh, to one right now. And Daytona, to no one's surprise, Denny Hamlin dominates this track. So, average finish of 11th, he has 5 top 5s, he has 5 top 10s, he has 243 laps led, and he has 2 victories. So, all things considered, by the numbers, I don't think you can call it. I think... By the numbers, looking at the, looking at it like this, it's dead even. Uh, average finish, if you take away Kyle Larson's two wins at Michigan, like I said, I'm just including his six races in that to match Denny Hamlin's six races. But average finish, a slight advantage to Denny Hamlin if you add up all the average finishes all together. Uh, wins, if you add Kyle Larson's two wins at Michigan, they're even on wins with two wins apiece at the remaining tracks. Uh, but everything else, uh, except for laps led, because Denny Hamlin has 243 laps led at Daytona, everything else is pretty much mm, split down the middle, so you have to go look at some things that aren't necessarily on paper. What things might you look at there? You have to look at which driver is hotter right now and why they're hotter. Kyle Larson, a lot of people are saying, is in a slump, but I actually looked at his numbers. He's not really in a slump. He's just in a slump for Kyle Larson compared to how he has run previously in this season. And what are the reasons for that? Well, apparently NASCAR has gotten super picky with Hendrick on the technical aspect of it. And there's also theories that Hendrick, because they've got all these drivers basically in already, they're just sort of experimenting with stuff to see if they can sort of hit something to make their cars go faster. So Right now, is Hendrick playing games or is NASCAR teching them too hard? Either way, Kyle Larson and Hendrick itself has not been quite as dominant as it was for basically that month and a half uh, previous to the last couple of races. On to Joe Gibbs Racing, they have kind of been on a hot streak recently. Their, their, their performance has seriously improved in the last three or four races, and they are, are contending specifically Kyle Busch, not necessarily Denny Hamlin. But... Overall, as a whole, uh, in the last few races, Gibbs has started to heat up. But factor in, you had a two-week layoff. And I don't know if you can look at either one of these things I just mentioned. So at the end of the day, you just have to kind of pick who you think is going to be the better driver at the last four races. Cause, and that being said, I'm going to go with Kyle Larson. And I know that's like, oh, we're so surprised. Well, here, let me tell you why I'm going to go with Kyle Larson. Because throughout this season, Kyle Larson has taken all of his tracks that he's weak at, and he's stepped up and run better. So I think Kyle Larson wants to win everything. I think he wants this regular season title. I think he's going to step up and do what he's got to do to take this regular season title. Because I think this season to him means more to him than any season he has ever competed in because it was, it's just so much more precious to him now because it was almost all taken away from him. So I think he is going to step up and go get that regular season title. I think he's going to try to get the regular season title and the playoff title because I think he wants to win everything. Like, he just wants to be the absolute champion. Like, no argument about it. I think he wants both of them. Sort of a triple crown, but even though there's only two things to win. And so I think Kyle Larson is going to win this. On top of which, and I hate to say this because I, I don't really believe in it, but a lot of people say that Denny Hamlin chokes down the stretch on things, and that can't, I, although I hate to say it, that can't not be addressed or brought up. All right, let me know what you think down in the comments, uh, and if you like the content, please subscribe to the channel down below. I really appreciate it, and it really helps me out a lot, and you guys have been awesome so far subscribing, so I really, really appreciate that, and... Other, free, other than that, thanks for your time. Peace.